So, Davon, you've dragged me out of bed at seven o'clock in the morning to talk about what exactly? We're gonna, I, I was going to ask you about Jar Jar Binks and his father. Yeah, okay, let's talk about that. I feel it's safe to say that the Star Wars prequel trilogy had a mixed reception from fans. However, I think one thing most people can agree on is that Jar Jar Binks can go fuck himself. Something apparently the character's own father agrees with, given that he once tried to kill him for being a clumsy dipshit. Like, there's just something about Jar Jar that I've kind of turned around on in like the years after the fact, because he's so bad a character and he's just so obnoxiously annoying. I kind of love it now. <laughs> and I've been recently playing the Star Wars Battlefront game. Well, you can play as like a lot of Star Wars characters in it and they have like hero characters. You play Darth Vader, Darth Maul, all the big ones. Like, where's Jar Jar? Why can I not play as Jar Jar Binks and use those dumb Gungan grenades? Yeah, I do this one. So going back to going back to the original topic, what's this about Jar Jar's father? Uh, well, Jar Jar's father hates him, and um, today we'll be referring to something that's not exactly canon anymore. Um, but that's pretty much everything in Star Wars now because Disney deleted everything. But uh, you know, yeah, we, all the best stuff is what they deleted, basically. Yeah, basically, yeah, and all the best stuff includes the story about Jar Jar's father, who is called Get This George. <laughs> George right. Binks. Called his son Jar Jar, he's called George. You can already see that his dad didn't like him very much when he gave him that name. Yeah. Jar Jar. Oh, well, that's a weird alien name. What's his dad called, George? Yeah, like Steve. It ruins the universe for me. Like, like, if his dad was called Steve, sort of like, it's obviously a reference to George Lucas, but I love stuff like that in which it breaks the universe. Yeah, or or like in the in the later in the the whole hyperspace thing, and it just like why, why wouldn't you just use that against the Death Star or something? Just like hyperspace through it and then destroy it, you know? Oh, Matt, like we have the best edit of that, and I'm hoping we can put another clip of it in of T Pose Leia mm -hmm. of when I made the joke of why didn't Princess Leia just use the Force to propel herself to light speed directly into the, the enemy <laughs> dreadnought? So that clip will be in yeah. now. I've said it about The Lion King before, where The Lion King, um, like Mufasa is a huge prick, because if you think about it, <laughs> what is it that Scar promises the hyenas to get them on his side? He doesn't promise them power, he doesn't promise them light, he just says you will eat, you'll never go hungry again. Yeah, yeah. So he is, that is, in effect, that story is the starving masses of the Lion King universe rising up against their apathetic ruler. He paints a pretty dire picture of their life under Mufasa of someone can come in who's clearly evil and just says, you'll eat. That's better than not eating, I suppose. We better go kill Mufasa. We better go kill um, Lion Darth Vader and just sort this out. Like, is that the greatest casting thing though, where like Mufasa is also Darth Vader? I actually hadn't ever really like consciously thought of that. That's totally true. Yeah. And then you've got Coming to America, where James Earl Jones in it, and like he's married. Like yeah, his yeah. wife in that film is the wife, his lion wife. But then mm -hmm. James Earl Jones yeah. is wearing like a big lion pelt over his shoulder as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's really strange. And I was hoping that he'd do that, then double down again, and he wear like a Darth Vader helmet. What's George's deal, and why did he want to? Uh, why did he want to kill his son? Apparently. Well, George's deal is that he is a seafaring, like salty ass. Like mariner Gungan badass with a 30 ton Gungan penis that he uses to beat giant alien sea monsters to death with. Like, I am not, I cannot overstate how badass Jar Jar Binks' father is in the one comic he has ever appeared in. Because he appears in one comic aptly titled George R. Binks, in which it details his life, which is just an endless series of misfortune which only started befalling him from the moment Jar Jar was born. And in this comic, it's revealed that the Binks name is one held in great esteem by the Gungan people, uh, partly because of George's just badassery and the fact that his family has for generations hunted something called the Gungan Whale. So what, what's a Gungan Whale? Uh, it's a horrible monster with giant teeth that um, George takes it upon himself to hunt, something his family has been doing for generations, and he wants his family to continue doing for more generations to come, to such an extent that he breaks up with a woman that he loves to marry a woman that he doesn't, purely because the woman that he loved couldn't sire him an heir. He marries a woman he doesn't love 
purely to you know get a pregnant, to get an heir, to continue the great Binks line, and the end result is Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> So then how did he actually go about like trying to kill him? Then? Well, it all happens when um, the entire Binks family is stranded on an island. Even though George knows his son doesn't want to be, you know, a, he doesn't want, doesn't want to hunt sea monsters. Which I think is a pretty relatable thing. And probably the only relatable thing about Jar Jar is like, I don't want to hunt sea monsters, Dad. That's a pretty <laughs> terrible job. And uh, he takes him out into the ocean anyway and gives his son a simple command. Mainly, please steer away from that giant monster that's attacking us which Jar Jar can't understand, and instead steers directly into the sea monster, wrecking their ship, and then they swim to shore, which is a desert island which has nothing on it, and then George just continues to get more and more depressed at the idea that he might die, and the last people he'll speak to is a woman he doesn't love, and his son, Jar Jar. His legacy is just a series of failures that culminated in his entire family being stranded on a rock, which is a pretty ignoble end for a great seafaring badass and George seems to know this because in the comic he eventually names the island Binks as Woe in direct reference to the fact I'm so depressed here <laughs> because he just spends all his time staring out into the ocean just going what have I done with my life as his son just bumble fucks his way around like an idiot. Uh, so from there like when does he actually try to kill Jar Jar and then how do they actually get off that island? Well he tries to kill Jar Jar because he just is so sick of his just his buffoonery and Jar Jar eventually says well I'll go get help which George like using his years of sailor knowledge goes well there's absolutely no way anybody could swim to get help that is tantamount to suicide in his head but in, in his words he says yeah sure Jar Jar go for it Go swim for help, that'd be great. <laughs> and he beckons his son towards the ocean. <laughs> That's cold. And Jar Jar is only stopped by his mother who recognizes that swimming for help would be a death sentence and saves him, which only depresses his dad that little bit more. And it all culminates in George just sitting there going, I'm just gonna end it all. And he puts a laser blaster to his frontal lobe and it's like, this is it. I'm just gonna end it. And like, this actual panel appears in an official piece of sanctioned Star Wars media of a Gungan putting a gun to his head and just sternly looking out to the ocean, thinking about the fact his life is a mess. So does he actually end up killing himself then? No, because that would be too dark for a Star Wars story. But, like, you know, George's misfortune doesn't end there because obviously his wife doesn't want her husband to blow his brains out. So she goes over to him and tries to reason with him. Like, like quite understandably, and the way that she tries to get him not to kill himself is by telling him, imploring him, George, think of your son, which annoys him so much he actually pulls the trigger. <laughs> like, the thought of his son, the last thought in his head before he wants to put a laser through it is his own son, and he <laughs> even fucks that up because he misses the shot and gets knocked out. And when he's knocked out, he has a like he goes into like a weird dream state where he remembers the woman he left. And he remembers his first love, like the only woman he's ever loved, and how he left her because like she couldn't give him a child. Mm -hmm. And then like she fades away as Jar Jar just comes into frame, and he thinks he's like, <laughs> I gave up happiness for, for this, this moment. Yeah. And the end result is Jar Jar. And man, that's gotta sting. So David, we didn't actually introduce who you are at the start of the video, so would you like to do that now for the people at home? Um, yeah, I uh, started, today I found out the website and then uh, kind of co-did it with Simon there and then we did, we actually did like 530 videos before and like before Ooh. it did anything, like each one was only getting like a thousand views or something like that and then it had that like moment of like all of a sudden just like skyrocketing and actually it's like your 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 scripts your articles were the ones that really took off like eventually like that youtube started loving and then that just kind of like propelled the channel Gosh. from there yeah do you had a pretty similar uh thing with your channel wasn't it yeah it was one video went viral and youtube's like yeah sure i think it was a year to the day that like we had oh, all, wow. it was almost exactly a year because our plan was if the channel didn't take off in a year we were going to go back to doing what we did before because i was paying for everything 
and I only had so much money built up. And it's like, oh man, I might have to go back and write those today. I found out articles. I don't want to do that <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing is like, um, for the only reason like I could keep doing that 500 and some is because the website itself was like, you know, earning some money. And so it kind of like funded it, but it was just like this huge loss over the course of like a year and a half. And then like once one video took off and then there were so many archives that it was just like every couple of days, a new video would take off from the archives. And then it just kind of yeah, kept like, like a... cascading for like a few months. It lasted it's like a, a few months. It was crazy. It's a cascading effect. And just, conf- right, just to clarify, you own and run Today I Found Out, correct? No, that's all your idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like initially it was just uh, like being lazy, honestly. Like I was in college and like I kept procrastinating, uh, just, you know, looking up interesting stuff. And, and at the time, like this was like 2009 originally, and there wasn't really like like all your YouTube ones, all your interesting facts YouTubes weren't around yet. That was a couple years later. Um, and the websites out there at the time were just so riddled with inaccuracies. And so I just like procrastinating, you know, looking up, you know, random stuff. And I was like, all right, well, let's just make this productive in some way. I'll just like do this as a side hobby. And then it just sort of like took off from there or whatever. And there was like, uh, I think it was like two years later is when you came on board, right? I believe so. Yeah. I think, did you reach out to me? Because I, I had like a very Jar Jar Binks-esque like rise to success where all of my successors were I bumbled into them ass backwards. Yeah, yeah. But I remember I just got a random email from you. It's like, oh, yeah. hi, I run a website. Do you want to work yeah. for me? I went, sure. Yeah, I think it might have been Shell that might have said like, hey, like is, this guy's good or something. Like maybe, or maybe I'm mixing it up. Like maybe he wrote, I don't know. Did you write for top tens first or? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, I think maybe Shell recommended you or something like that. And then, yeah, yeah. I just love that when you're in videos, people are like, oh, who's this guy? (laughs) Do you ever feel like I run the entire, it's all my idea. (laughs) Do you ever feel like doing that? It's like getting really angry. Like, oh, it's me. So who's this guy presenting the videos? He's not Simon. It's like, I, it's my site. I do it. The funniest is though when I do it doesn't really happen anymore, uh, but like or as much anymore. But I mean, still a little. But in the beginning, yeah, I would come on, and then people would be like, "Oh, this script is horrible. We need Simon and his his scripts back." And it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, cause I I will admit to getting a little bit salty when I'd see people go, "Oh man, great video today, Simon. How'd you come up with this stuff?" It's like, come on, just watch to the end. I'm like credited right there. <laughs> My name is there. It's there. You can see it. Yeah, I just wanted to bring you on. Because I've, 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 wor- I've worked for you for so many years. Yeah. And like, you helped me out. Like, David, if, if you like this channel, like, you're a fan of David because he's the whole reason I even had the, uh, like, you know, the grounding to put together the funds to like, you know, start the channel. Yeah, yeah. And it was weird how long it took because your videos, I mean, you, you look at like your, your length of videos YouTube loves, you look at the engagement time and stuff you get and like it's awesome. Like everything about your channel, it's like the YouTube algorithm God should have loved it from the, right from the start. That's the weirdest part um, because I think Brad can confirm, I'm sure, if he edits this video, I'm sure he'll put like a little thing at the bottom, um, where when we started the channel, I said to him, oh, it's when we take off, not if, because I know the content is good because I yeah. saw the videos I wrote, like the articles I wrote for you that turned videos, they're doing mm-hmm. well. Yeah. And that's my words. Yeah. So if I take my words and I read them out, we should be fine. Because <laughs> the only difference is it's not like we still got a British guy presenting them. Yeah. It's just I'm not as eloquent as Simon. So if it's if these don't take off, it's my fault. <laughs> I think it's even better because you you put that personality in and that that humor, which makes it makes them even better, I think. And that's something we actually we've actually copied from you a little bit it's is fair. where we're starting to do that more and more is to put that personality in, which sees, I mean, our engagement time is way better. People watch longer because, you know, some of the topics they're interesting. But, you know, when you're talking like 15 minutes to cover something dry, but, but you put that personality in those aside, it kind of breaks up. And uh, that that humor and stuff. So we've actually kind of copied you a little bit on that one. And that's okay. But if I see Simon in front of a green screen with the corners not put in, I'm going to be <laughs> mad. I, I, I'll i draw the line at that. That's my thing. So I have good editors and I feel really bad for them because they went to university for this stuff and their job now is editing static footage of a green screen. <laughs> I tell them to deliberately make look bad. No, that's, a, that's totally... If you go watch the We're Hiring video, that is... It is so crappily like edited because I have almost no video editing skills. When I edit on my channel, I always make sure I put star wipes in. So I went to like, oh, I could put a fade and a fade would look professional and clean. But no, nah, man, star wipes. But I think it's almost funnier and better because it's so crappy. Like oh, the, 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 the cutting and everything. Like, yeah. Why do you think we leave the corners of our green screen in? That's a deliberate yeah. <laughs> decision, by the way. People don't, well, that's a deliberate, we do this on purpose. We could zoom in further or we could like 
edit these out. For example, whoever edits this one, edit the green screen corners out now. And now put them back in because I don't like them without the things. Now we've got a distinct visual style. And that's more important than quality to me.